nation. I want you to reach out to the person next to you. Let's touch some humanity. Let's touch some energy in this room. See, we're not going to go forward until we say what this day is going to be like. So that the, the person who says differently, we can shut them up and say, you know what, I already affirmed my day. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Just find a quiet moment and bow your heads for a moment. Thank you, Mother God, Divine Father God, for this wonderful opportunity called today. Today I move my mind and my body in the perfecting presence of the Most High. Right where I am, God is. God is in the midst of me this day, creating divine order through divine love. I fear nothing, seen and unseen, all the goodness of the universe. Today, I claim for my well-being. God is power. I am powerful. God is strength. I am strong. God is peace. I am peace-filled. God is truth. I am wrapped in truth, a manifestation of the most high greater is the power of God in my mind than any condition in the world greater is the power of God in my body than any affliction in the world greater is the spirit of God in my spirit than any spirit in the world the power of God renews reassures reaffirms all that I am all that I am God is all that is noble I am this truth I claim this day as my divine inheritance. And to, together let us say, and so it is. And so it is. Ooh, don't you just feel it? Yes. You may be seated. Okay. Time. Move to the next. We've just finished that. Go ahead to the next. Write your own story. Go ahead. The 14 chapters that expand your results. To write your own story, ladies and gentlemen, you've got to be uncommon. What does it mean to be uncommon? What does it be to mean to be uncommon? To be uncommon means that you take matters into your hands to challenge yourself, not challenge others, challenge yourself to be as good as you possibly can. You know, everything I think that I've become, I really have to say is due to my father. And to talk about my father sometimes brings tears to my eyes. Let me tell you a little bit more about me because if I do so, you understand why I say certain things that I say. My father, or rather my great, 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 great grandmother, founded the Nkoro village. Let me tell you what Nkoro is. Nkoro, let's just say Oakland County. It's like Oakland County. And Oakland County has different cities. Can you name some of them? Of course you can. But let's just assume that you can't. <coughs> it's not a trick question, people. Come on. What makes up Oakland County? All right, I'll study Pontiac. Troy, Southfield, what else? Auburn Hills, Rochester, Rochester Hills, Oak Park, Royal Oak. Okay, that's how it is. Nkoro is. Nkoro has different villages that make up one community. My great, 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 great grandmother founded Nkoro. They came from another place which you could say is like Wayne County, and they moved to Nkoro. When they settled there, she named it Nkoro. And then all her children, all her sons, became the paramount chiefs for that community, or the equivalents of king, is it? So my father was the king of Nkoro when he died. What I loved about my dad was, my dad was full of wisdom, idioms. And you know, in Nigeria, when you have a child, you name them what you want and expect of them. I love my name. I know you can't pronounce it. <laughs> if I give you the full name, you can't pronounce it. But I'll give it to you anyway so you know. My full name is Uwa Anwakwa. 
Can you say that? Why, George? I think you've got it. <laughs> that means the world does not listen to those who whine, so we might as well go on and make a difference. <laughs> but let's think about it. What does that mean? And we talk about make a difference, not necessarily just make a difference in other people's lives, but in your own personal life. I used to remember when I was a child, I would go to my father when I had a problem. My father wore glasses, and for whatever reason, he, ne he never pushed it in. It was always at the tip of his nose, and that was for a good reason, so that he can read and see you too, okay? So when we go up to him, when I had a problem, I remember one time, my mother braids my hair, used to braid my hair very tight. Uh, in those days, they used thread. Instead of just braiding your own hair, they used thread, and they'll thread it. It's usually very cute, but it hurts like crazy. So there was a young man at school. We used to call him Man Mountain because he was so big for a 12-year-old, and he was so mean. And he loved to see me come to school because even though mother had done a marvelous job on my hair, he knew it was painful. So whenever he saw me, he would yank it. And I will scream. It hurt so bad. I used to hide from him. So finally, I told my father, Dad, I'm tired of hiding from this guy. Do you think perhaps I could go to another school? He didn't say anything to me. He just pushed the glasses down a little bit. And he looked at me. And he says, what's your name? I said, here we go. My name is Owanwakwa. What does it mean? He says, it means, I say, it means... The world doesn't listen to whiners, so you might as well go and make a difference. So he says, so why are you here? <laughs> I said, well, uh, why am I here? He says, yes. You never, and that goes for all of us. He says, you always look at your challenge in the face, no matter how big. Sometimes the bigger they are, the harder they fall. What you have to do is understand the person who is intimidating you you are intimidating them in some manner or form. And that goes for our challenges. Though they may be great, if we stare them in the face, in the eyes, we can overcome. So I went to my mother and said, Mom, Dad is not listening. He says that I should go and fight this guy. <laughs> my mother says, well, there must have been a reason behind it. I don't think Dad would be wrong. So I said, Mom, don't you get it? The man, the, he's man mountain. He says, so what? Do what Dad said. So I went back to dad. I said, <clears throat> all right, dad, what am I supposed to do again? Dad says, well, look, I'm glad you came back. You see, as tall as he is, he's got a weakness. His weakness are his ankles. Whenever he comes to you, grab him around the ankles and you'll be amazed he'll be down. <laughs> well, you know what? I just about had had it with my hair being pulled. I was willing to try anything to stop my mountain. So when I came to school, there he was hiding behind the tree. I told him, you can come out now. I see you. I see you, but you know what? You're not going to pull my hair anymore. He says, oh, really? You're challenging me. I say, yes, I am. Oh, how do you plan to do that? I, say, I don't know. You, you tell me what I should do to defeat you. Can you imagine? I had the nerve to ask him <laughs> what I should do to defeat him. He says, well, I'll meet you in the back of the building. I said, very well. So I told all my friends. They were so excited. Yes, she's going to challenge my mountain. But they were doing it behind me. Nobody was in front of me. They were all behind me. <laughs> they were all saying, go, you can do it, you can do it. Well, you know what? At that moment, it was, I had a choice. Either continue to be punished or end the punishment. So I was prepared to fight him. I was 10 years old, puny. I was, not, I was not as big as I am now. But I was very puny. So, and he knew he was going to beat me. So he gathered all his monsters, all his bodies, and they were all gathered in the back of the, the building. I was petrified. But all I could hear is what my father said. You don't have the, uh, uh, you never, you never run from challenges. Look him in the eyes. I was looking in the eye. The more I looked him in the eye, the scarier he got. But I knew I had to do something. So you know what I said to him? And that's what we say to our problems. I said to him, guess what? Everybody expects you to beat me, right? After all, you're big and I'm puny, right? But wow, can you imagine if I actually beat you? Do you know what everybody will say? I said, come on. He's standing there. Every 
everybody's thinking like, this girl is crazy. I said, I said, come on. They're going to laugh at you. They're going to laugh at you if I put you down. He was so busy trying to figure out how I wouldn't beat him. I grabbed him around the ankle. I said, by job, that's right. I got him on the ground. And well, the rest is history. He never bothered me after that. Well, that's the same thing. That's where I understood what my name meant. You make a difference. Each and every one of us. Do you know there's a prophecy on your life? All of us are important. We are capable of doing it. I say, once you have breath, could you all please inhale? Now exhale. Oh my God, you are living. That means you've got the opportunity to get it right. If you didn't do it last, uh, yesterday, get it right today. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, neighbor. Get, it right get it right today. All right now. <laughs> you know what? Here's another way that I found out the significance of my name. When I was maybe about, in, uh, ooh, well, about 10 and a half or something, we had a war. I don't know how many of you knew about the Nigerian Biafran War. We had a war. And during this war, the only thing when you are a child in a war, you see such horrors. On a daily basis, we saw the decomposing bodies giving violent assaults to the nostrils. It's a painful thing for a young child to see. But guess what I enjoy doing that blocked the pain? Reading. I love to read. And I can tell you, you know all the Hans Andersen fairy tales? Yes, way back then in Africa. I know every, I know, I read Jack and the Beanstalk, what was all that? I read it all, I knew all of them. That was the only thing that blocked the pain. Then the war encroached 